Hi everybody and welcome to my studio. My name is Lana and I'm an acrylic artist. Thank you so much for dropping by today. We're going to be painting a fun little Christmas project. It's a mixed media project. Uh, I hope that you are going to paint along, grab your paints and supplies. It's going to be such an adorable fun one. Let's take a look at it. Here it is. Counting the days till Christmas is what I've titled this one. Isn't that bear just so adorable? So stinking cute. So we have mixed media here because we have decoupage paper onto the bottom. Several elements are stenciled on this project, which I have created a stencil on my website specifically for this one. Um, but you can paint along with just painting by hand as well. You do not have to stencil. Um, this one is on an 8x8 eight eight, uh, wood canvas. Again, you can paint it on any size surface that you want. You have, feel free to in, reduce or enlarge the line drawing to fit your project. So this one's going to be fun. I am going to just love painting this one with you. We are going to be using Deco Art Americana acrylic paints. So let's grab our paints and supplies and let's get painting. All right, everybody, let me tell you how I've got my surface ready. First of all, I am on an eight by eight surface. This is a wood canvas. Um, currently, they are available on my website. Um, I have limited supplies of them. LanaLam.com if you're interested in one, but you can paint it on any surface that you want, a regular canvas, just a panel of some kind, anything, whatever you've got. Don't go out and get something special um, but of course these are there for you. Alright, so I've already applied a coat of multi-purpose sealer, important step, I never want you to forget it, with either a damp 2 inch foam roller or a damp artist sponge, whichever one you're going to use. You can also go ahead and take that and paint the edges after your multi-surface dries, whatever color that you want. I've got mine painted black if you're doing this same type of surface. Um, you can paint it any color within the palette or whatever matches your home, so um, that option is there for you. Now I want to paint part of this canvas with my 2 inch foam roller and the rest of it I am going to decoupage some paper on. Now I'm going to be using this wood uh, paper that I got at Hobby Lobby. They still currently have it last time I checked which was about two weeks ago. This is uh, September 22nd, 2021. So that is, uh, you know, when they have their, their paper still. This particular paper I think they keep on hand because it's a pretty popular paper. But you can use any paper, any fence design. You can paint the fence design. It's super easy. Just paint a medium uh, to dark gray dry brush over it with some white, some lighter gray, some maybe a few little touches of uh, raw sienna in there, you know, or an asphaltum, and then your black and create your lines. Or you could use soft black. It doesn't have to be black. So creating a fence is super, super easy. Painting one. So I've already cut a strip off of uh, how big I want down here. It's about two inches is how far I want my little fence to come up. So I am going to mark that with my ruler. This is a two inch wide ruler. So I'm going to make sure that it lines up with my um, bottom of my wood canvas here, my surface. And I'm just going to mark a line on there. You can just faintly see it. That's all I need. I just need something faint because I know that's where I want to bring my paint down to. And actually, I'm going to bring my paint a little bit past that. So when I apply my paper, I'm sure to get the background covered up well. So the first thing we're going to do is um, let me move this paper out of my way is uh, paint on our uh, color that we're going to put on the top. Now um, I want my sky color to be winter blue. Um, it's just kind of a fun wintry color and since this, I'm making this more of a wintry scene I want to make sure that my background looks wintry. You won't need a lot. This is not a very big canvas here. So I'm going to get my uh, foam roller wet simply by putting it in my water basin which is pretty 
stained up from paint, but you can't expect to have a clean water basin if you're painting all the time. All right, I'm gonna wring out the excess moisture out of my roller, keep my paint from becoming too thin, but you want it damp so the paint comes out of the roller and doesn't stay in it, and it makes it much easier to clean your roller. So I'm gonna go to my line here and just go past that line, and I'm just going to roll the entire surface with my dampened two inch foam roller. Now you can use a sponge as well, a paintbrush. You can use a paintbrush too and paint it in. It's going to take a couple of coats to cover this um, wood. So I'll let this first coat dry and then come back and apply a second coat because you can see it didn't completely cover the wood surface. So um, I'm gonna let it dry and then I'll come back and get a second coat on here as soon as it's dry. Alrighty, I've got my uh, paint up here at the top all dry. I wanna do a little bit more to the sky before we start adding elements on top of it. So you're gonna need a damp uh, sea sponge or just a stippling type sponge. Um, whatever you have. You could even use an artist sponge, whatever. Um, you have that works for you. I've got on my palette deep midnight blue, some of the background blue, and some white. I'm not sure I'm going to use the white yet. I think I want to do the white in a different way, but I want to create a little bit more of a night sky. So I'm picking up both of those colors, the deep midnight blue and the background color, on my sponge. And I'm just going to start applying this tapping it and moving it around. <clears throat> My sponge is damp so I've got a little bit of moisture in it so that I can move this around. And might bring the darker color out more along the edges and just continue to just play around with it and stipple it and slightly blend it together. I'm going to lift this up because I'm getting a little bit of a glare. I got a, maybe just a little bit too much moisture so I'm going to take a little bit out. And this is just going to make a fun little sky. I don't have much paint in my sponge. And I'm going to bring it down pretty close to where the fence will be. We've got a big element going in here. Some, maybe, a, maybe a distant tree back in there, I'm thinking. But we'll see how that's going to work out. So this is just giving us... Uh, this all will push back into the background. So um, it's just a subtle little almost misty uh, sky for the night. So let's get this dry and we're going to get ready to glue our paper on and maybe do a little bit of cloud work in the sky while our paper is drying on. Alright, my background is just about dry but we can go ahead and get our <coughs> our paper ready for applying to the surface. So I'm going to take my paper and I've got a damp brush here and I'm using the decoupage for napkin because it's what I had but if you have the decoupage that is matte um, it will work great too but you want to make sure that it does have a matte finish that it has no gloss no shine at all to it this is a um, important because if you want to paint on top of the paper anything that's got some kind of gloss uh, to it will resist the paint and then it won't stick to it. Alright so I know my paper's longer so I'm just going to um, put some in the middle here covering the majority of the paper. I cut mine longer you can cut yours exactly the size that you need. I'm going to put some decoupage medium on my um, surface here and it's okay if it goes up past the line that I drew or how far my paper is going to come up because it will dry clear. Alright, now we're just going to take our paper and you can line it up at the bottom or you can make it go past the bottom and I'm going to press it on here 
get this in the camera shot a little bit better. Get these papers out of the way. So I'm just going to press it on here nice and firmly. It's sticking directly to wood so it shouldn't really go anywhere. And then I'm going to apply a coat on the top and I'll let this dry and then I'm going to trim my paper. We get any bubbles in it. I'm going to push that bubble out while I'm still brushing on it, but they should disappear when it dries. If not, you can use a straight pin, stick it in there, and um, take some decoupage medium on your finger and rub it into that air bubble, and it should flatten out. Have a little bit of, of moisture um, on your finger. Put the glue on, then get a little drop of water and just rub it and smooth it out. Not too hard that you'll tear the paper, you know, or do something weird to the paper, but just enough to get it to stick. So now we need this to get dry so that we can trim it. All right, my paper is dry now, so what I want to do is trim it. So I've got a cutting mat here that I can cut it on. I've got a nice, sharp, thin blade, and I'm just going to cut it right next to my surface. Now, you can cut your paper to fit your surface exactly so you don't have to do any trimming. That is fine. But if you're going to do that, I highly recommend that the um, if you're painting your edges black, bring it up onto the surface just a little bit where your paper will be or whatever color you're painting. Um, you know, pick a gray or something. So that way if for some reason it is slightly shorter on the edges you won't notice it because you'll have that color underneath it. So um, we've got our paper trimmed, super easy to do, and we're ready to start adding some details onto this. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is, now this is optional, if you don't want to do this part you don't. I really like how the background looks, but I want to create a little bit of a cloudy type look. Not a lot. So I'm going to use a um, domed brush. Uh, you can get these from the brush guys. They are pretty soft. I'm going to use it dry. I'm going to have a dry paper towel handy and load some white into my brush. And then I'm going to offload it. because I can always add to this and make it darker if I want. And now I'm just going to scumble a little bit. This is dry brushing very loosely. Add some clouds in here. And we've got a main thing going on right down here. So maybe a tree over here. We're going to have a box over here. So um, some of this won't even be seen. So you can see the more that the harder that I push, the more that comes off of my brush and leaves a little bit of um, some cloud stuff in there. And like I said, this is optional. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to, but it's just another fun little element. I think we might, um, well, I haven't decided yet. We might spatter some snow in here. If we're going to do that, we need to do that now. So. Just a little scumbling. I want it a little bit wider through here. White. Whiter, not whiter. So there we go. That's pretty fun. It could be like a, a going into evening sky because we've got the clouds that we can see now. We've got a little bit of the dark elements in the sky. So that's a lot of fun. I like that one because we would see the fence more. And um, it's making it a lot more fun this way. Okay, so just continue scumbling. You see I only loaded my brush twice with some white paint and we got a good amount of cloudy stuff going on. Okay, so um, let's add, uh, I want to add a background tree over here on this side. So I'm going to keep my uh, two colors that I have out, my midnight blue and my um, my deep midnight blue and my winter blue which is my background color okay these are the colors we use in the background and I want to make a, a Christmas tree type thing kind of in the distant 
Um, we might blur it out a little bit and have some fun with it. I'm going to use a, a more stiff type brush now. I'm also going to use it dry and I'm going to load it up with a mix of these two paints here, the Deep Midnight Blue and the Winter Blue. I want it to be just a, a little darker than what the background color is. So we're going to try and find a color that's a little bit in between these two. Okay, I'm going to wipe a little bit of it off because I don't want a lot to come off at once. I'm not taking as much off of my brush as I did when I um, did the clouds. All right, I need more paint. Definitely can't can't see that so let's add more of the the blue in there the, the deep midnight blue all right I'm just gonna try to stipple this in I want it to be a distant tree I want it to be a, a decent size tree it's a pine tree so that's what I'm making here. We're going to take it all the way down to the fence. I'm just going to keep loading paint as I need it, tapping off a little bit. Soft pressure when I start with my tapping and um, you know I can get harder as I can tap harder as I can feel the paint coming off of my brush. All right, I want to put a little bit more in there. And it's just a big old pine tree over here, kind of distant. Um, I'm going to try and keep it off of my paper here. Uh, if your paper is good and dry, you can tape that edge. I'll float a shading down here so we won't have a line of separation there. All right, I'm going to go into my uh, winter blue now and tap a little bit of that onto my brush. And I'm going to tap a little bit of this on here for some highlight. Not too much because this will make the, the tree blend too much in the background. And you can add some ornaments and all that kind of stuff on here. Okay, now I'm just going to pick up, a, I'm going to wipe my brush off. And pick up a little bit of white. It's going to blend with my paint, but it's going to make it a little bit lighter. Tap a little bit of that off, and we can tap a little bit of white in here. Just kind of go back and forth. Need a little bit more white. And anytime you feel like you have lost some of your color um, underneath color, like the darker blue. You can just come in and tap some more of that in. So we've got the look of a, of a pine tree here. I might add just a couple of taps of that dark blue back in there. A little bit more in my brush. Okay, that pine tree looks pretty good. A little bit more of something over here. I'm not really sure what it needs. Maybe a lighter color. Let me grab some lighter color here. I'm going to take the, the winter blue and the white and mix them on my brush. And we'll tap a little bit in here. A little bit more white. Ooh, that's a lot of white. So your tree could have snow on it if you want. Totally up to you, your tree. But I am using such a small amount of paint here, okay? It should be a pretty fast process making that tree. Um, 
a little bit of dark color and then just a little bit of light on top of it this tree is going to push into the background when we put our other element on so um, you know you don't have to work too hard on this tree but it's a great practice for if you're doing a much larger scene and you want to put some distant trees in um, that brush that I used which is a um, it's also a uh, dynasty brush that you can get at the brush guys this is a mezzaluna this one is an extra large that I used here all right so now we're going to transfer on our pattern okay so I've got my line drawing right here just basic shapes here no details on the eyes I want a square up here in the corner I want a two inch square so I'm gonna make a line over to the two inch I think that's about how big I made it on my pattern check I'm gonna make it smaller yep I made it a little smaller than two inches it's two inches wide by about one and three quarters inches tall Whoop. okay so one and three quarters inches tall so I had it about this tall line my ruler up to that edge and then we're just going to come and draw connect our lines here sure I'm lined up with an edge so you can use the pattern but sometimes the pattern isn't always perfectly straight depending on how it gets transferred onto the for the line drawing so I'm lining one of my thick lines up with the bottom down here Okay, so this line right here I don't need, so I'm going to erase it off. Use a white plastic eraser when you're erasing on your paint. It won't leave any marks or mar your project in any way. Okay, so we've got basic lines on here now. Okay, so my line drawing is generally just a rough drawing but I have created a stencil specifically for this um, pattern but you don't have to use a stencil um, for the bow now this bow that I've drawn on here is different than the bow that's on my stencil but this is the one that I will be using on my project right here this one that I created but um, you can use this one that I have drawn in either bow your choice. We'll finish it up the same way. It's just that base coating it in, I can base coat it in super fast with my stencil and get it on there. This is also the greenery that we're going to be using down below, down here. So I'll start the one in the middle and then go out and do one on each side and I'll do two layers with this stencil. And then these are the numbers to put in here and we're going to do that with chalk. Um, because we're going to paint this in with uh, something that we can apply chalk to and then wipe it off um, and then I have days till Christmas now this was just my sample one so my D didn't uh, it pulled the center out when I took it apart so but it will have the center in for the D and we're going to put days till Christmas up here again you don't have to have the stencil to make this you know how to write numbers um, so you know and doing garland down here is fairly easy this is just to speed up the process um, if you're making more than one for a gift you can make them up super super quick so this will be my um, stencil on my website lanalam.com if you want to paint that okay so our base coats on this is um, the dark areas will be lamp black and the light areas are going to be winter blue and snow white mixed together 
So our, our light areas are back here and the muzzle. Okay, we'll add the nose and all that stuff later, but right now the muzzle and the head are going to be that mix of winter blue and white. It's going to be more white than winter blue, so just so you know, we're just slightly tinting it. And then the ears will be black and the hands will be black. We're making a panda bear. <laughs> I've never painted a panda bear before. I'm not going to do fur. This is just going to be a fun one, uh, so it's not going to be a lot of detail. So we're going to take our white and get a little bit of blue. And we're probably going to do two to three whites into that blue so that it's not so blue. We want to be able to highlight on it. So I'm just going to paint this in. I'm going to come in and add details onto the ears when we're done. But along here I want to come down and maybe create a little bit of fun edge there. We'll do the same with the hand. Go around the eyes. And you'll need a couple of coats on here, so do one coat and then let it dry and do a second coat. Um, it can be drying while you put on your black areas. Again, I want this to be a pretty fast little fun project that you can do quickly if you're needing uh, another decoration or a gift for someone that just loves panda bears. You can change this bear into any bear that you want. So don't feel like you have to leave it a panda bear. And again, I'll add some really fun stuff going on there. And I'm giving a little spike on the top of the head, but we won't really see that when we put the bow on. So you can just make that smooth. And we've got a little bit down here. I try to keep my areas that are going to be light, all completely separated, so that I know where they're at when I go to add, start adding details. So this is the muzzle. This is um, two to three white with one winter blue. Depends on how, how your background looks. If your background is darker than mine, then you'll want to add more white and if it's lighter you will want to add more blue. So, so we're going around the hand there. Still I want to keep it off of the fence. Now this little area right down down here um, I'm gonna make it that light color oops as well um, because it's not, we're not quite to the chest area here, so we won't see the dark on the chest. I could just bring his hand over a little bit farther. Okay, I need to finish up over here around the eye. You can go to a smaller brush doing these areas. Um, don't feel like you have to use a big brush like I'm using. This is just our first coat, so I'm not worrying about it being perfect. All right, so now we're going to put our first layer of black in here. So let's grab some black. He's going to be a cute little panda. I think I will grab a smaller brush as well. A little bit smaller. Oops. Black paint all over my hand. A little bit smaller brush to um, fill these smaller areas in. That was a 12 uh, flat that I was using there. So I'm going to an 8. A little bit smaller. And we'll paint in the eye area. And when you come back with your second coat on your black, you're probably just going to be cleaning up mostly where we our second coat of our light color may have gotten on there. Okay. Just these big ovals, we'll add the eyes in later. This is just those patches that go around the eyes of our cute little panda. Okay, 
Okay, and then we'll do the ears and the hands. And uh, I want to be a little bit, um, get a little bit of water in my brush. I want to be a little bit um, spiky, I guess, with the ears. Make it look like some spiky little fur. So I'll just create that shape first and fill it in. Super fun. All right, let's do this ear over here. Again, we want some little spiky stuff going on. adding some some bringing some of the white fur over into the ears a little bit okay and then we'll do the hands and the hands I want to make a little spiky as well just give your brush a little bit of a wiggle come right along the fence there this is again, you can tape off your fence if you feel like you're, you can't get right against it without getting paint on it. Okay, and then, and then his hand on this side comes around and kind of over the nose right there. All right, then this one over here. Actually, that little white area that I painted in right there will probably disappear pretty much. And just give it a little wiggle and a jiggle. Right along our fence and paint it in. He's looking so cute already. I'll bring this one over just a little bit. Okay, so let's get our second coats on everything. Hopefully when we get the second coat on here, it will look a little bit more of a, a blue color. You can take your white and mix a tiny bit of gray in it and make make it more gray so that when we add highlights on top of it you'll see it better because I think this is a little bit too light for uh, us seeing some highlights so I think I will um, change the mix uh, on my next layer to be um, to be a gray color so that when I put the white on it and I feel like the muzzle needs to be a little bit bigger So I'm going to bring it out so that it's over this hand, but that hand's over it on that side. So just some adjustments we're going to do there. All right, so when I mix a gray color, I'm going to mix white and a little bit of black, mostly white. We just need it to be a light enough gray. When we put white on it, the white stands on top. So, yeah, this will be a much better color for our panda and it's okay if we don't cover up all that lighter color um, we'll come back in, in with our finishing touches and take care of every little detail on this but this is going to get us a nice quick coat on here Just mix up a nice light gray. All right, so 
and it's lighter than gray sky so don't um, I mean you can use gray sky but um, it's a pretty pretty bright gray color so you might want to um, add a little bit more white into it or something this is definitely a gray gray um, you know because we mixed it ourselves and that's how you get those those colors mixing is so easy so I highly recommend that you do it okay, all the way to the fence okay that looks much better uh, so I will put a three to one mix of white and lamp black um, that will get you a nice light gray three snow white one lamp black make a light gray painted in so I'm gonna go get my second coats of black on here and we'll add some more details to this cute panda okay so before we uh, finish with the black and the gray I've drawn some little spiky hairs on the ears and I want to paint those in with that light gray mix so just grab a round brush and create some little hairs. Definitely need to thin my paint here. So I want to flow. And then one over here. So we want to just fill in the ear just solid black to begin with. And then we can um, add our little hairs after we get the uh, gray in. We'll come back because we're going to come back and lighten these little hairs on here. And then we'll have a couple coming over here. And then go ahead and put two coats on these. I'll blend them in like everything else. And I think this one over here needs a little bit of some tweaking done to it. and then I think I might take my black and fill that area back in because I don't like how big that got right there I just drew these in by hand you will have the pattern so not to worry that's still a little bit big okay that looks better I'm gonna add a few of these gray things a little bit sharper coming off the side there and we can't see the side of the face so I'm not going to worry about it so that's going to get us now ready to add some more detail lines on here so we need to add our eye shapes and our nose shape now Okay, I'm going to show you some options for adding your lines for your eyes. Here I just drew in an oval shape for the nose. Um, so, you know, it's up to you. It can be a little bit more flat on the bottom than what I have it here. It really, it, there's, there's no right or wrong reason here to draw in a, a panda nose. So we can make it just a little bit more flat on the bottom. Now for the eyes, we're going to have three different sizes of, of circles. So I do sell assorted sizes. I think I have six sizes of circle stencils. Let me wide angle out of circle stencils. So I've grabbed three that I think are the right size here. But you can also pick up one of these at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Probably Walmart sells them. I don't know. But uh, this is just a circle template. So depending on what you're doing, if you're stenciling a background and you want random circles, 
um, this is the way to go get a sheet of them off of my website but if you're just creating a couple of circles you can use this so I'm going to take my this might be too big circle Let's see what size this one is this looks like a three-quarter inch three-quarter inch so which is that one so let's see if we can make it work all right so nope it's too big this one's too small because I want the circle to fit just right inside this eye here so I'm gonna pick a circle that is going to fit inside just inside here to still give him a big eye this is a 9 16 circle here here okay that's going to be the first layer of our eyes we're going to paint those in first um, before we come back and add any more circles in there so we want to paint those in with um, a little bit of white and winter blue mix. I'm going to go to my 8 flat because I don't want them to be pure white yet. I'd like to be able to highlight them. So I'm going to paint them in with the white and winter blue mix. So I'll just mix those. White and a little bit of winter blue. Just a little bit to just slightly take it from white. And then we'll paint this circle in. And we'll take a couple of coats to paint it in. So I'll go off camera. If you get out past your circle, you can use a much smaller brush than what I'm using. You can clean up with your black so that you have a nice clean circle here. Okay, so see I got out past my edge there. Do this one. This is white with just a touch of winter blue so it's taking it away from the pure white look that way we can um, highlight it a little bit but if you don't want to uh, do the highlighting stuff on the white part of the eye then just paint it in straight white I mean I might change this when I go to my second coat I might think I think it's going to be easier if we just paint it white so that gives us a good little undercoat anyway. The nose is going to be black. So we'll just paint it in with black. It's kind of more of a flat edge down at the bottom. And then just make an oval shape. cute little panda nose. I'm giving him a big panda nose because it just keeps growing and growing. My goodness gracious. It doesn't have to be this big. <laughs> Trust me. Alright, he's got a little little bit of some black that comes down here. The line, And then this is the inside of his mouth. So we can paint his mouth. get the two sides to match and give him that cute little mouth okay we got lots of things that we're going to be touching up so I want to fix the shape of his nose over here this looks a little weird okay so just make sure that his nose is same side on both same size on both sides of his little mouth thing because I feel like his nose got ginormous so um, let me add I'm gonna add
add just white into the eyes and then I'm going to touch up the background. I think just white will definitely save us a little step here. And if you use uh, the circle template, you can use it like a stencil. Just tape off any circles that are close by and stencil the eye in. That would be the fastest thing to do right there. And you get some nice, good eyes with a stencil, and then you can clean up. any into the black area that you need to. Okay, so I got those in, two coats. Let's clean up on the black where I kind of got a line here because I want the eyes to be super, super cute. So we don't want any deformities on the eyes. Okay, those eyes look super cute right there. I'm liking that. Okay, so while the eyes, the first coat of the eyes are drying, and I can see my eye here, my shape is not right at all. That one's shaped right, it's shaped like an egg. The um, black area around the eyes should be shaped like an egg. Okay, so I'll take that gray color. Too much black in my brush. Wipe it out, get a lighter gray. And I'll touch this up here. Okay, that looks much better. More of an egg shape there. Looking good. Okay, once your white area on your eyes has dried, we want to add the next color on here and we're gonna use crisp blue. Crisp blue. Oh, goodness. Okay, and we want to add our first circle in here. We don't want to completely fill the eye, but we do want it to cover a good majority of this circle. So um, we're going to draw our next circle in, or like I said, you can use this as a stencil and stencil it, tape off all around it, okay? And then you can just use it as a stencil. This is a 7 sixteenths inch circle that I just made. And we're going to paint it in with uh, crisp blue. I may want to add some white to it. Uh, I'll just paint it straight crisp blue to begin with. And then see how it looks when I'm done. We want the eyes to be super, super cute. So again, take great care in painting this circle in. For my second coat, I am going to add a little bit of white in there. Oh, he's looking super cute. 
Okay, I want that blue much lighter than that. So I'm gonna use my stencil because it's just gonna be so much easier to stencil this in. I'm gonna take the crisp blue and the white and mix them together to a light blue. So it might be two white for you with one blue, could be two blue, one white. Um, I'm using two whites with one blue stenciling that in. So much easier and I like that brighter color right there so much better. So we will let that dry and we can add our black on top of it with for our iris or pupil, pupil with a smaller stencil. Okay, so I'm going to use this um, circle template so I can show you how to use it as a, as a stencil. So I've taped off, just with scotch tape all around this circle, any open areas, even along the edge, because I don't want my stencil brush to go any place I don't want it to. And this also helps to hold your stencil in place. So we're going to grab another stencil brush. And we're going to put some black in here. Super quick. There it is on that one. So we'll take it over here to this one. And see if I can get it centered. It's hard for me to see the blue on the eye now because I've got paint on my stencil. So hopefully we'll get this eye in a proper place. So, mm, that needed to be just a little higher, but we're going to go with it because I don't want to change it out at this late stage. So, you know, using this to stencil in your white areas and then your blue and then your black, super, super easy. Um, so just tape off and cover any areas that you don't want uh, paint to get into your project with. Okay, I think I'm going to have to touch up around my nose, so I'm going to do that real quick. I want to make it a little smaller because I think it just got out of, out of hand here. So I'm going to make a little bit of gray. And I'm going to take it back down a little bit. And give him a little bit of a cuter nose. Now your nose will be just fine because yours will be the line drawing. I'm creating right here on my canvas, so or on my surface. So um, I have a rough line drawing that I go by, but um, in the end, it's what I paint that becomes the line drawing. So, all right. Okay, I wanna get this little box up here painted in before we finish our bear off so it can be drying. So I'm gonna take my scotch tape and tape this box off on all sides. Now, if you have some um, blackboard paint, chalkboard paint, which I had a bottle of DecoArt chalkboard paint at one time, but I'm not sure, I cannot find it. So I'm not really sure where I put it. So I am going to use chalky gesso. Um, it will work just as well. right on the line Oops. and just tape it off with some scotch tape nothing fancy about that and I'm going to take some chalky gesso this is my chalky gesso that I have in black if you have any kind of black gesso it will work just fine and I'm going to paint this in with a couple of coats of the chalky gesso. But if you have the chalk paint, the chalkboard paint, you can use that. That's a lot of paint. 
So we'll take a couple of coats of this to get on here nice and smooth. You can just paint it in with black because actually we're going to be varnishing over this. Um, and you can p apply your chalk for your numbers directly over your varnish and then wipe it off. So this is really if you're uh, not planning on varnishing or if you want to varnish it afterwards, then you can use the chalky gesso or the chalkboard paint. But uh, for uh, the purpose of what I'm doing, I will be varnishing it and then I can just apply, I'll be varnishing it with a matte varnish and then I can write my chalk directly onto my paint and it won't, um, it won't stick. I'll be able to wipe it off and change the numbers as often as I want to. Alright, so I just put a quick second coat on there. I just use my lamp black uh, because like I said, we're going to be varnishing this. So I'm just going to pull my tape off. I should have a nice beautiful box there to put numbers in. Alrighty. Okay, we're going to as soon as I get this tape off my hand here. We're going to move down to the fur part and work on the fur. So I want to grab uh, you can use a rake brush or you can use a wave brush I'm not really sure which one I'll use, so I'll grab them both out. We're not done with the eyes, but um, we're going to leave them for a moment and move to the fur part. Now, I don't want to add a lot of detail. I think that's why I'm going to use the rake brush. I, I don't want the fur to have tons of detail. I want to keep it fairly smooth, so I am going to use the wave brush. So you can use a flat brush to do this as well. I'm going to load some white and I'm just going to start pulling some white, almost dry brushing on here, giving us our bright, we do need to shade down here by the nose so I could have left some of that the gray color. So this is just white. So we want to um, kind of follow our little hairs that we got there and bring some of this up. We'll see a little bit of the gray when we're done, but not a lot. Yeah, I probably should have got a bigger one because this one is not holding enough paint. We're going to bring our little round brush in here and create some finer little pokey hairs. I'm going to go ahead and come down onto the um, hands, <laughs> paws. nice white little fur stuff going on here sort of fur I don't I don't want the panda to be too furry you know I want it to be more smooth and more playful and covering up all of the um, gray. You should still see some gray peeking through in there, which is good. Okay, so that was just with straight white. Okay, got a bigger wave brush out so I could do this second layer faster and some fresh white because my other paint was not very fresh. So we're just going to do a quick little dabbing layer here. Um, I like the panda to be more smooth, so don't get too wild and crazy here. And I 
gotten my black so I can take a damp brush and clean that off or I can just come with my black later and touch up. That's one reason why we didn't finish out the eyes because you never know what's going to happen along the way. our black areas will definitely be touching up. Okay. It's looking pretty cute. Let's add some strokes of white on here to redefine our little hairs. Make him look just a little bit bushy. And fun. All right. So we've got some shading that we have to do on here now. I'm going to touch up a couple of black areas. And like right here. where we got a little bit of the white in there. Okay, now I'm going to take this black and add some fun little hairs coming off of the paws. down a little bit and give it a little bit more flow. Okay, just some little hairs. Nothing spectacular. And then do this side over here. Whichever direction that, you know, it's easiest for you to add some little details on here, then you can do that. all gonna blend in there just some fun stuff let's do the ears now the ears are gonna have some little a little bit more get some of that paint off so we can have some fine little lines coming up here just some fun fun stuff you get to be the judge of your bears ears and how they look, so just have fun with it. Okay. Alright. He's looking super cute. Super cute. Put a little bit more black on the nose because it looks like it needs another layer on it. Just made a boo boo. Covered up with some white. Okay. Well, let me shape this. This eye here kind of lost some of its egg shape. So anything that you need, just fill that in. Okay. 
Um, you can also just paint the first layer that gray color and then the next layer or two just paint straight white because we're going to do some shading and um, I can see right now in the end you're not going to see a ton of that gray. Okay. All right, he's looking like a shaggy little panda bear. I'm gonna put a little bit up here on top. We're gonna get ready to add some of the stenciling on here. Um, the bow's gonna go over here, so I'm not going to worry about that over there. I wanna shade just a little bit on this bear. Um, not a lot. We can give him some rosy cheeks if you want, but I'm not gonna to go to that place. So I'm going to mix that light gray, so a little bit of black and a little bit of white. And we'll make a slightly darker version of the gray that we base coated underneath. And we're going to shade right here. Oops. Stay out of the black, but we can clean that up. I want to a little bit here at the top behind the nose. Okay, and then we'll do down here in this little C area right here and a little bit underneath the lip. And we're going to put some down here because the muzzle stops right here. So we want to see that little bit of shadow area down there. going to put some of this next to the eyes. Kind of around the eyes, I guess. Definitely going to have to touch up my black. And anywhere on your fur where you want to create a little bit of a shadow, you want to put the black. I need more white on the um, muzzle. So I'm going to add a little bit more white in there and then I'm going to go touch up the black on my eyes. shape the muzzle nicely. Okay, I'll touch up my black. Then we'll do some highlighting on the eyes. So let me touch up my black and the eyes here. Okay, so these two were, we don't necessarily need a separation right here where the um, fur from the paw ends and the fur or the black part of the eye starts. So I'm not really going to um, worry too much about that because I think we kind of get the idea of what's going on there. Just anywhere that there's black that got a little bit of white. I'm going to shade down here. Oh, i the brush, I think. With a little bit of black. As soon as I can tell which side of the brush the paint's on. And then maybe a little bit down here. Let's see, the paw comes over a little bit onto the muzzle, no, not here, 
uh, just on that side, so I'm going to have to shape the muzzle a little bit better over here with our white. And just clean up any place you need to. I'm not really going to shade where the fur comes over the white too much because, you know, that's that's just a lot of tedious stuff that we don't really need, so there's no point in doing it. All right, so on the nose, let's create a highlight on the nose with some white. Okay, back to our highlights here. We're going to highlight on the nose with some white. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that moisture out of my brush. I'm just going to create a line of a highlight on the nose. Simple, simple. We're going to add some dots of highlight on the eyes right here. We'll add a little dot. More paint on my brush. A dot there. So we'll do the same thing to the other eye. Dot here. Dot here. Okay. And then a couple of dots down here in the eye. And if you need to make the white of your eye a little bit whiter. You can do that and whiten up the eye a little bit there. I think he is looking so cute, so cute, so cute. All right, I want to touch up on his mouth because I got a little bit of gray here. So, you know, after you're done with all your shading. Go back and, and touch up any areas that you need to. Okay. And pretty much our bear is done. Okay. So we've got our greenery here and just our words to stencil on. Oh, and the bow. I think we're going to work on the bow next. Okay. Let's add the bow on our cute little panda here. And um, let me tape this down because I don't want it to move. So I'm going to be painting this with red, but to get my red to be opaque, I need to paint it first with a gray color. So again, we're going to go back to our black and our white and paint it in with a, a light gray mix. You can use a gray sky if you have that on hand, but I didn't want you to have to get a, another paint color out when we have black and white right here and we can just mix it together. So I'm just going to stipple in this bow right here with a coat of gray. If you're painting it in by hand from the pattern, you're also going to paint it in with gray. Okay, so I'm just going to move that up so it can dry a little bit. And then we're going to uh, paint it in with some red. Okay, I think it is dry. Let's add some red on here. I just wiped all the paint out of the stencil brush so I wouldn't have to wash it. And we'll put a couple of layers of red on here. And this will cover up that gray and give us a nice opaque red. So let that coat dry, then apply a second coat. If you're painting it on by hand, you're going to do it exactly the same way. All right, I've got my two coats on. I'm going to remove the stencil. Uh, we're going to be using it here in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and wipe out all of the paint out of this brush. I have decided that I think I might want to rosy up the cheeks, maybe. I'm not sure if I'm going to like it, so... I'm going to rub out pretty much all of the paint out of this brush. I mean, really, really, really remove the paint out of this brush. A dry brush loves to hold on to the paint, so you got to get it to let go of some of it. And we're just going to put a little bit of this color on the cheeks right there. Okay, not too dark, just a little pretty color glow there. And one of the other things that um, I want you to do if you're stenciling, I don't like all the, these are called 
bridges or openings in a stencil. When you're making letters, they're called bridges. Um, so I want to fill this in with my red right here around that knot. I know where the knot is, so I don't have to worry. And I need a little bit out here. So I don't really need to worry about that space being there to show me where the knot is. I, I pretty much know where the knot is. Okay? So we, um, we can wash this brush out now. We're going to use a different brush for our lettering. Let me wide angle back out because we're going to go ahead and add our lettering while we let that red dry. Actually, we're going to go down and add our greenery, I think, first. That way I can get that color out. So with my greenery here, I want to kind of start the first one in the center. Okay, so um, I'm sure this is not going to be exact. So this one's going to end here. This one's going to start here. And if I put it here, here. So I might have to move it over just a little bit. I could measure this and get it exact, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to put my stencil right up to the edge of my fence, okay? So try and get it centered. If you want to measure it exactly where the center is, and then you can find the center of this and do it that way. I'm not going to be that particular. Uh, so we're going to put our first layer in with uh, black green and then we'll also use leaf green and citron green so I'm gonna go ahead and put them out because we'll be needing them fairly quickly when you're stenciling the paint dries so much quicker than when you're painting with a brush so um, we're going to start with black green, load that in my brush, and stipple our little greenery. You can put anything that you want on your fence. You can have some Christmas flowers growing up in front of it, whatever appeals to you. So there is the first one. I want it to be double thick, so I have to let that dry before I can put the next layer on. So I'm going to come over here and bring this right beside it. Piece of tape to hold it. I want to be all the way up to my um, fence here. But not past it. I don't want to be past it. Alright, let's paint this next one in. This particular part of the stencil has some very delicate pieces that are cut on it. So when you're cleaning it, I recommend a super, super soft toothbrush or just do it by hand. I just rub it with hand sanitizer and let the hand sanitizer eat away the paint and then rinse it off. I try not to uh, be scrubby scrubby with it. All right, so we'll come over here to this one and put it on. Looks like I got mine pretty even on there. So that worked out well. Need more paint. And we'll take it straight up. Now you can just use a stippling brush and stipple this all on here as well and do it that way. So I want this to be double thick. So I'm going to come down below it. I want it to be thicker garland. So I'm going to come below it and I'm going to stipple again. And this should give us a nice fat little garland on here to look substantial on our fence. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So we'll go below. I'm going to come over and do this one. And again, we'll load our brush up. This will take us no time to put this greenery in here. All 
right, the second layer there. Okay, and let's come do the middle one. Oops. I'm going to drop it down just a little bit below where I put it before. And then stencil. This gives us a nice little fat garland. Okay, we'll do a little shading up there in a minute. So I want to move back out to this one and I can just line it up anywhere on here. It doesn't have to be exact now. Wipe my brush out and grab some of the lighter green. And we're just going to put this on in a few places. I'm going to do it a couple of times so that green is going to soak down into that dark color. So we'll start adding some light color on here. I'll move over to this one give that one a chance to dry a little bit. some of this on there. You don't have to cover up all that dark color. Okay, I think I'm going to do it again over here. I don't think I got enough paint on this one. Okay, that looks better. And you can move it down if you want to get more green a lighter green down in the uh, area that you put so you could do this twice as well I'm trying not to cover up all of that dark it's kinda hard to do when you're doing something a little bit smaller like this but not impossible alright I'm gonna wipe out all the excess paint out of my brush now and we're going to pick up the lighter green. That's going to be citron green. That light, that green that I just put on there was leaf green. And now we're going to go to citron green. And we'll do even less here. I think I'll start in the middle. Tape it on because you don't want it sliding around. Okay, I want to go a couple of times and make sure that light color really pops lift it up. I want some there. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we'll do the other two. This is very fast um, stenciling, so don't overthink it or overwork it. That looks good. And then this last one over here. Tape it down. Okay, that looks really good. I like that. We're going to add some berries on here to our garland now. And so I'm just going to take my little round brush and go into my red. Just pop some little berries on here, here and there, wherever. Zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna have to make them a little bit bigger so you can see them. You can use the end of a small paintbrush as well. Um, bury them in sizes because that's gonna make it look a little bit better. You know, a little cluster of them here and there. Fresh paint works best. My paint is not the freshest here. So, just a few little berries on here. And again, they can vary in sizes. All have to be little bitty tiny berries. So let me make some of these a little bit bigger over here. Okay. 
Now you can come in with a little dot of white on some of these berries. That would um, highlight them nicely. So I'll do that. And I'm still just using this small little round brush, but you can go to a little detail brush if you want to. Just a little dot, little dot will do ya. And you don't have to do them all. You can miss one or two. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's add a little bit of a um, shading on here. So on the greenery itself, up here at the top where it touches the fence, we're going to do some black green. We want to make it look like it's connected. So just right there where it connects, we're going to put some black green. Just a little float of it. So I'm just side loading one edge of my brush and doing it where they all touch. Okay. Now we want to create a little bit of a shadow underneath. I don't want to get tons of, you know, busy detail, but I, th I feel like it needs to have a little shadow under it. So I'm thinning down some black side loading into a damp brush. The brush has a little bit of water in it and just side load some black. And we're just going to create a little bit of a shadow coming underneath our pine. We're making it jaggedy just by tapping the brush. It's going to make it kind of a jaggedy um, shadow. A little bit more black in my brush. So I'm loading again with black and I put a tiny bit of water in my brush. I want this to be a little bit darker. And then we'll do this last one over here, creating a little bit of a shadow. Okay, so and that's all you need for the shadow there. You can put a little bit of shadow coming from the panda, like right here, along the fence top. We can put a little bit of a shadow. That will kind of clean the edge of the the top edge of the fence up a little bit. A little bit of black right there. Okay. Just a little wash up some color along the top edge. Don't get this too dark. Um, we want to keep it light. there. I'm going to have to add a little bit of white. Okay, that looks a little bit better. All right, so we want to shade um, back here with our deep midnight blue. We could probably use our lamp black as well. Actually, I might mix the two. Some lamp black and um, just a tiny little bit of lamp black added to that deep midnight blue will make it a little bit more opaque. And need a little bit of water in there. I will just put the, oh white paint. I want to pick up white paint. Not sure how I did that. All right, let me try this again. Just right along here. We'll just create a little bit of darkness back there and then over here we can do the same thing just a little float of color keep it off of your fence that's kind of going to push everything back this one needs to be a little bit wider or a little darker I think I missed a spot there okay
All right, that is going to settle that in. I do think I need to bring the black wash uh, right through here. Just scoot it along there a little bit. I don't really like it coming up on the white fur, so I just wanted that edge of the paper to be covered up a little bit. So if your paper is, the edge is too bright, scoot a little bit of black along there. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna touch up my black where I put the shading color, kind of got it onto my black fur. This is looking super cute. We're almost done with it. We just have to do the bow and the lettering at the top. And um, you can put a frame, a, a white frame or something around your box here, which I think I might do that because I think that will help it a lot. So we're going to get ready to paint our bow in now. Okay, so if you want to put your stencil back on, you can certainly do that. Put it on and do any kind of... Uh, shading and highlighting right there with your stencil on if that makes it easier for you. So I'm going to take my Napa Red and I got a lot of black. Mix a little bit of black with it just to darken it up and we want to come inside here with that. So this is just, the stencil is just going to help keep you from getting outside of your um, lines okay so you can go along you can take this color along the bottom edge of your bow we can go along the outer edge out here I have to turn that so I can get my brush in there mix me up a little bit more teeny tiny little bit of black in there seem to get my black. Now I get too much. That's the way it always works. Okay, so let's go along this edge and this edge. We'll go next to the knot. Okay, so that should give us our shading on our bow. Let's lift it up. Look at that. Look how easy that was. Super, super easy. You just have to line it up so that you don't have any white areas that are showing. All right, so we can highlight it the exact same way. And we're going to highlight with Neon's Fiery Red. Now, you might have to use this color a couple of times, depending on uh, how well it's going to show up for you. And by the way, I'm using a 3 8 inch angle brush, but you could go down to a quarter inch to do all this as well. So we're going to put some right here. And tap some right there on our knot and on the opposite edge that we shaded on our ties. So when we lift up, we have a beautiful highlight on there. I'm going to take it off. And I'm going to touch up my shading because... You know, it has that little gap thing. I want my shading to go all the way to the knot. And down here below on the ties as well. So down here, definitely could use a smaller brush doing this. We don't really have to do anything more to that bow. Um, I am going to put the neons on there a second time because the first time just always just kind of fades down in. Just a super quick bow right there, okay? Nothing super hard. I'm going to get my lines that I drew on there off. I mean, you can go in and add a lot more detail if you want to, but uh, I think that's all the detail that I really want. Now, you can go out here on your tree and add some blurry ornaments. I might do that. Right now, I want to add a little frame around 
my uh, box here. So you can freehand that very, very easily, or you can just paint it in with a round brush. Let me find my round brush. What did I do with it? There you are. And we're going to use white to do that. Actually, before we go and do that, I'm going to shade on the bear with a very light gray. That's black and white mixed together. Um, around the bow a little bit. Let's create a little bit of a shadow around this bow. with my frame up here. You can tape it off. Let me show you how, how to do it. So I might just go ahead and tape it off. I'll show you how to do one edge and then I will um, do the other. So I'm going to come in on the frame just a little bit. You can see right there I'm probably an eighth of an inch inside the frame. Then I'll take a second piece and I will put it right up to the line. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tape this side since I've got one side taped. And I don't need a piece of tape near this long, but oh, we're moving in about an eighth of an inch. And then right on the line. Okay, we do want to tape along the bottom and the top so that we don't get paint past. And then we just pull all this tape off at one time and tape the other two sides. Okay? You could technically tape all four edges first, and then that way when you uh, want to mark off for your edges, you can do that. So um, I'm just going to use a stencil brush. Oh, that one's really wet, so I can't use that one. That one's got green in it, so I guess I'll just use a regular brush the stiff brush that I used earlier for the um, sky. No, I didn't use this one for the sky. I used it for something else. I don't remember what I used it for. All right, we're just going to tap in some white paint. You can use a makeup sponge to do this as well. This is just an extra little added something. You do not have to do this, so don't feel like you have to. I like to do it a couple of times to make sure I get plenty of white on there. Okay, so now we'll just pull off the tape. So we have two edges done, and I'll go off camera and tape the other two. But like I said, you can paint them in with a round brush. Let me just show you how to do it with a round brush so you don't feel like you have to tape off. If that's not something you even want to spend the time doing. So this won't, won't be as probably as straight and precise as, as um, that one. But you want to pull towards you and follow the edge, the black, slowly. And you can get a nice edge there. That's a little bit wider, I think, than what I painted in. But it's going to be just fine. So I'm staying right along the black edge so I can keep it straight. And that one got a little wide. up with a brush, but I can also come back with my black paint. Okay, so see, you can paint it in, or get it back on camera shot, or you can tape it off. Either way is going to work just fine. You just decide which way works best for you and go for that way. Um, all right, so let's decide if we want to put some ornaments on our tree. I kind of feel like we need to carry some color onto that tree a little bit. 
but when we do it we're not going to make our ornaments um, precise you know they're not our focal point so we'll maybe give them a little blurred edge so we want to do that before we put our stencil on up here so that they are pushed to the background so we're going to use green and red and we're going to get our blue out our crisp blue and we'll use those three colors to paint in our ornaments I've decided I wanted to add a little bit of highlight on the bow so I put a little white put a dot and a dash right along the edge here following that shape on each side and then we'll put a little bit of a highlight up here this is just snow white it's going to fade down in there so it's not going to stay on top at all and then a little bit here and a little bit there you can do as little or as much highlight on that bow as you want to, but or no highlight. You don't have to add any bright highlight on there like I did, so don't feel like you have to. Okay? All right, so now we're going to move on to our little bulbs. Um, I want to use a brush like we used in the beginning. Let me find it. Okay, this brush. I'm going to use it dry and I'm going to switch between colors. So that means I'm going to have to clean the paint out of it in between. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to clean it out with some hand sanitizer. That way I can remove all of the moisture very quickly into a paper towel. So we're going to put some little blurred bulbs back in here. So let me get my colors out. I want some fresh paint for this, so we're going to do blue, and that's the crisp blue, leaf green, and tomato red. So we just want some fresh colors of these out. So I'm going to start with the blue one. And I'm going to remove the paint. I'm using it dry. I'm going to remove the paint. You can use any kind of small little brush that you have. And I'm just going to give the illusion of some stuff on the tree back here. Okay. I probably will wash over that when I'm done with um, some um, Deep Midnight Blue. Oh, goodness, I couldn't even think of what color I needed. So now I'm cleaning out the brush. I'm getting a different paper towel and wiping out the paint. I might want to come back and put some more blue ones on later, but for now, I'm just going to leave it there. So I'm going to go into the green and remove. And we'll just add a few little ornaments on there of blue. You can add a string of lights on there. Again, I'm going to clean it out with the hand sanitizer and wipe it out onto a dry brush so I can remove the paint and then we'll go into some red and remove we don't want hardly any paint in this brush. These could also be like the lights on the tree that are giving a little bit of glow. They don't technically have to be ornaments, but that makes it a little fun. Okay, that's all we're going to do. That's, that's it. I'm not going to make any definition of specific lights or bulbs or whatever that is is what it is okay so now we just need to stencil the words on here and I know that my um, D is not right but I will just fill it in with the winter blue and midnight blue mix when I'm done I do want it to be pretty straight so I'm going to tape it on here and then I'm going to hold it up and make sure it looks pretty darn straight Okay, so 
All my stencil brushes are dirty. <laughs> so I'm going to grab a makeup sponge to apply the paint on and I want to make my letters white. So we're going to add some white on here. All this can be painted in by hand. You do not need a stencil. Just transfer your pattern lines on. A round brush will paint this in so easily. So I'm just going to tap straight up and down. Makeup, brunge, brush, makeup, makeup sponges are not absorbent, so don't get a ton of paint um, on here. And you have to go straight up and down if you try to go at an angle or push it or mush it or do something like that, you're going to get it underneath the stencil. So just straight up and down. All right. There we go. Now I will varnish this before I write any numbers on there. And when I write my numbers on, I'm going to just use chalk. Okay, nothing else because chalk I can remove. Let's take a peek. Oh, I got a little bit of bleed under and over here, so my letters are pretty crappy. Too much paint on my sponge. So be sure not to do that. Um, I'm going to try and fix them because that will just like make me insane. So I'm going to try and fix them. I should have just painted them in by hand, I guess. But I made the stencil specifically for this. I think when I touch up my D over here, I'm going to close all my bridges while I'm doing this. Um, I'm going to just touch up a little bit. So if I'd use a stencil brush, I would have gotten no bleed under. So just be aware, a stencil brush is the best thing to use, and I should have went and found another one. Okay, I'm going to touch up my D, and then we're going to come back. Okay, thought I was done with this one, but I'm going to add one more thing. You can see I've drawn on here some claws for my little bear. So I want to put some little claws on it so we know that those are the bear's paws. So I just drew some um, kind of like I did the hairs out there. Just drew a I don't know what kind of shape that is. <laughs> just <laughs> drew an open-ended curved triangle. How's that? We're going to paint these in with white for the claws. That one got a little big, but that's okay. We're going to come back with some black. And we can touch up and shape up a little bit better. Maybe make some of these a little bit smaller. Not quite so fat. And then I just want to pull, let me thin my paint down. This is just the black paint. paint. Thin a few, pull a few hairs onto the um, the nails, and you may want to do two coats of um, the white to get it to stand out a little bit more. But I think that's going to definitely uh, help us know that those are the hands. <laughs> And I'm probably going to have to highlight on this one, I think, a little bit. Um, just a little bit more white on there. And so this one, um, right here, where the eye and the um, fur come together, I'm just going to make a dark gray value here. And put a little bit right there. So we know that's some hair coming out of there. I really I'm I'm really undecided if that's even necessary to be honest with you because 
I think we can all kind of tell that the eye and the paw kind of come together. So I'm just not going to worry about that. I don't want to mess up a good thing. So I think this one looks pretty good. Let me do a couple of fixes with hairs over here. And I think we're pretty done. Pretty darn done here. Smooth that out. And then any place that you feel, this is where you go go look look over it, step away from it for a minute or two, however, whatever is helpful. And then decide what you need to do with. with your bear and then just come in and touch up those areas Let me wide angle out just a little bit so you can see the whole thing super super cute I love this one guys I have enjoyed this one so very much it's completely not what I do because I am not an animal painter at all but this one was fun I thought it would be a fun one to do so you'll want to varnish it with a couple of coats I would use a um, matte varnish um, not anything that is glossy um, you could use a gloss because then when you write on there it would be easy to come off but gloss is going to be hard to write on with chalk so you want to use something that you can still write on it for your numbers uh, or stencil your numbers on like there's one day left or if you want to do 12 days left you can do one and two and you don't have to stencil it on you just take your chalk pencil my thing is completely wet here you just take your chalk pencil and um, let me go down here to a number that's not in a wet area on my stencil. I put uh, hand sanitizer on it. So you'll just put your number on there like that and then you can come back and wash it away with water as long as you've got a satin, not a satin, a matte finish. Something that is really flat. Okay? You can add sparkle and bling onto this if you want to, but what a fun little project. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for painting along with me. Please give me a thumbs up. Please comment and please like. That helps me so much in the YouTube algorithm. And I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.